Aloha everyone, my name is Deepa. Welcome to What's For Yoga. Today our focus will be inversions. So the inversions that we will be trying today are Sarvangasana, which is also known as shoulder stand and also known to be the queen of all the asanas because of all of its health benefits. And we will also be doing Halasana, which is also known as plow pose. Both of these poses are really great at releasing deep neck and shoulder tension, and also great for releasing sinus congestion. So we'll get ready for these poses by warming up the spine, the shoulders, and the hamstrings. So we're gonna actually start on the floor today. The props we'll be using today are a blanket and a block. So if you feel that you need your blanket to sit, we are gonna start in a seated asana today. So you can place that blanket or pillow on the floor, have a seat on it. Just make sure you feel comfortable. You can sit in easy pose or what we call Sukhasana. And we'll just start by getting centered and starting to breathe. So go ahead and close your eyes and draw your ears back over your shoulders. A lot of times we'll sit down and the chin is sticking out way in front of the chest. So just take a moment to align the ears over the shoulders by retracting your head. Take a nice big deep breath. Exhale and drop the shoulders down toward the hips. Release the hips toward the earth. Feel your grounding connection to the earth as you extend up through the spine and out through the crown. Breathe there into that long open space running up and down the spine. Your eyes soften toward the floor. And you bring your inner focus to the belly. We'll do the three part breath today for our pranayama exercise. This is also known as the full yogic breath, filling from the very bottom of the torso, pelvic floor, all the way to the upper chest, clavicle area. Inhale in through the nose, draw the breath through the third eye, down past the throat and heart, deep into the belly, and then draw your inhale up into the upper abdomen, and now draw it up into the chest. So it's like you're filling a tall glass of water. On the exhale, it's like you're pouring the water out, released from the chest first, then the upper abdomen, and then the low belly. So I'll take you through that a couple times. Inhale through the nose, draw the breath through the third eye, down past the throat and heart, deep into the low belly and the low back, feeling the sacrum open. And then draw the inhale up into the upper abdomen and mid back. And finally up into the chest and upper back. So you can feel the breath all the way around the body, not just in the front. And then on the exhale, release from the chest first, then the upper abdomen and then the low belly. So don't get too distracted by technique. Really work to take a step back, allow the pranayama to work for you, and really just experiment with the breath. Go ahead on your own for about a minute. Let's complete one more breath.
keep that nice deep breathing happening while you go through your asanas today always in and out the nose and really try to listen for your breath make sure you can hear your own breath as you move so we'll start today with the hands at the heart in prayer position and we begin to move with the breath here in robin's breath inhale into the heart center as you exhale, drop your chin to your chest. Lean back a little bit on the sacrum as you reach your arms forward. Inhale, press your heart through your arms. As your arms open up into a T position, lift your heart toward the sun. Look up. Exhale, again into a C curve. Chin to chest. Hands come forward. Lean back on the sacrum. Inhale, back to start. Let's try that again. Keep the shoulders down as you move. Exhale, release. Use your abs to curl your spine into a C curve. Inhale, open the arms nice and wide, lift the heart up. Look up toward the sky, really open the chest, and then exhale. Activate the abs to curl the spine, chin to chest, hands forward. Inhale, hands back to center. Exhale, release nice and soft. Visualize you're swimming through the ocean, pushing the water away from the chest, coming up out of the water as you look up. Exhale, diving back in, C curve, hands forward. Inhale back to start. Do one more time on your own. And now go ahead and exhale, release your shoulders, elbows down, and take the right hand past the left knee Left hand behind you as you gently twist, looking back over the left shoulder. Inhale, pass through center. Exhale to the other side. Inhale, coming back through center. Good. Shift off your prop. Place that to the side. You will need it later. And bring your knees underneath your hips and your wrists underneath your shoulders in the tabletop. We'll go into cat-cow pose, getting deeper into the spine now. Drop your belly down. Inhale, look up, open the heart. Exhale, cat curl, top of the head toward the tailbone. Really try to open the vertebrae, especially in the middle of the back. Hard to separate the vertebrae from each other there. Inhale, drop the belly back down, arch your back, look up. Exhale, activate the abs, top of the head toward the tailbone. Two more times on your own, cat curl. From this last curled position, inhale back into a nice flat back and exhale, drop your hips to the left as you curl the top of the head toward the right hip. Inhale, pass center, nice flat back, and switch sides. Hips to the right, top of the head toward the left hip. Inhale, pass center, and then exhale, shift your hips back to your heels, Bakatasana, forehead to the floor. Bring your belly all the way down onto your mat so we can warm up the spine in Cobra Pose, or in Sanskrit, Bhujangasana. Place your palms of your hands down underneath your shoulders. Your elbows are always going to be nice and tight toward your ribs. Chin down on the mat. Tailbone presses down so your pubic bone is pressing down toward the mat. And then open the bottoms of your feet as you lengthen out your toes. So the tops of my feet press down along with the tailbone. That presses down. Belly button lifts up to protect the back. Inhale. Lift the chest up just to the lower ribs. We'll do this dynamically. Exhale. Keep your abs contracted even as you release your spine back down to the mat. Tailbone down. Belly up. Inhale. Rise up. Feet are pressing down into the mat. Exhale, release. One more time like that. Nice long tailbone, firm belly. Inhale up. Elbows stay nice and tight toward the ribs. And then exhale, release. Good. On this next one, you're going to come up and hold and breathe. Inhale, rise up. Keep your abs strong. Keep anchoring down through the tailbone. 
Lifting up through the crown, open the heart, take a nice deep breath in. And then exhale, release. Using your abs, keep your arms close to your body. Push up, nice strong flat back there. And exhale back into Bakatasana, stretch out. Inhale back up through table and sitting in the center of your mat, swing your legs around to the front. Warming up the core now, so important before you go upside down. It takes your whole body strength to be able to do that. So we're going to warm up the abs. So go ahead and place your feet about hip width apart and sit up as tall as you can on your sit bones. So you want to take any of the C-curve action or slouching out of the back. Lengthen up through the top of the head and get a nice flat back. So my shoulders are right over my hips, ribs are down. I'm going to press my hands into my thighs and push my legs away. My chest and back will try to resist that pressure. So just gaze forward, shoulders down, heart lengthening out on the high diagonal. Push the thighs away and resist the push. Keep breathing. Just breathe naturally however you need to through the nose. On your next exhale, go ahead and release your chest toward your thighs. This time, place the hands behind the hips on the mat, fingers pointing toward your hips, and draw the knees up. So you've got your knees bent. You're going to press the insides of the big toe ball mounds together. Pull the toes back. Activate the abs. Once again, taking that slouch or C curve out of your spine. Breathe here. Really pull the belly button to the spine here to take the weight or the work out of your hip flexors. And you can add your arms. So the lower legs are parallel to the floor. Nice, easy breathing here. Lift the heart. Let's take a breath. On your next exhale, set your feet down and apart. Still the knees are bent and round over your legs. Drop the head. Breathe. Go ahead and swing your feet behind you. We're going to come up to standing now, bringing the feet underneath you with a nice deep knee bend. Drop the head gently and then inhale, unroll. Use your abs to unroll and stack the vertebrae one by one until you come up to Tadasana where we can do one set of Surya Namaskar Sun Salutation. So go ahead and stand toward the short end of your mat. Hands at the heart in prayer position. Belly button to spine. Inhale the hands up and back. Open the arms and exhale as you swan dive forward. You can bend your knees. Inhale, look up and exhale. Step your right leg back into a full runner's lunge and push it down and out with both feet as you interlace your hands behind your back. If you need the ground for support, go ahead and place your hands down on either side of the front foot. Nice, wide, relaxed toes. Belly button strong to the spine to support it. Reach out your crown, reach out your hands, reach out your heel as you lunge forward. On your next inhale, keep your lunge, keep your knee right over your ankle as you tone the right glute. And inhale your chest up toward the sky for the chest opener. And then exhale, release the right hand with the fist down against the mat for the twist. Left wrist over left shoulder as you look directly up at the hand or to the side. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, release your right hand down. Firmly place your hands against the mat and step back into plank. Inhale. Exhale, Bhaktasana, stretch out. We'll inhale into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, Upward Facing Dog. So drop your forearms down against the mat. Inhale your head and chest through the arms and in front of the biceps. Long tailbone, firm belly on the way in. Inhale. And then release your legs, curl your toes under, and exhale for Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Go ahead and pedal your feet back and forth as you begin to properly press down through the first finger and thumb for the best weight distribution. Nice deep breath as you switch sides, warming up the calves. Now come high onto the balls of the feet. 
bend the knees and really push the floor away, lengthening out through your tailbone, lengthening out through the knees as you straighten the legs. Exhale your heels down and your sit bones up. Take a nice big deep breath in. Don't forget, this is an inversion as well, so you're getting those health benefits of being upside down already. On your next inhale, step your right foot forward between the hands. And then we're going to switch sides from here. So press down and out with both feet. And once again, if you need your hands for support, leave them here on either side of the front foot. Make sure your knee is directly over your ankle. Stacking joints protects the joints. Interlace the hands if you feel strong here to lift the chest gently up away from the thigh. You should feel strong and straight like an arrow. Reach the crown out. Reach the heel out. Feel those two points stretching apart as you lift the hands gently up for that shoulder stretch. And now inhale. Keep the knee over the ankle as you open the chest here. Draw the chest up toward the sky. Keep that back leg straight. Exhale, release the left hand right under the shoulder on the inside of the right foot. Inhale the right wrist up over the right shoulder. Take a nice big deep breath in. And then exhale, plant the palms of the hands firmly down. Step into plank. Take a nice deep breath here as you pull your ribs and belly up away from the mat. And then exhale, hips to heels. Stretch out in Bhaktasana. Look between the hands. Inhale, dive the head and chest in front of the biceps. Gather the abs up and in. Open the hips. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. This time going right into the pose. Nice deep breath. Use your abdominal muscles. Step your left foot between the hands, then the right. Let your chest rest on your thighs. Inhale, unroll, stack your vertebrae. Reverse swan dive the arms. And exhale your hands to the heart. Release your arms down at your sides. Absorb and breathe. Now go ahead and grab your block, if you have one. For this pose, Parshvatanasana, the single-legged forward bend, we'll be stretching the hamstrings. Um, I'll give you an option as well. You can place your hands on your legs if you don't have a prop, or you can use the seat of a chair. So if you are going to use the seat of a chair, place it right in front of you so that when you hinge at your hips, you can place your hand on the seat. And I like to, if I'm going to use the chair, place it on the actual yoga mat so it doesn't shift away from me and slide off the floor. Since the mat is sticky and rubbery, it will hold it in place. But if you're concerned, you could always place your chair against the wall. Place the block, if you're using it, in front of the right foot to start. Starting with the right leg, inhale the right foot behind the left heel. So we'll do Parshvottanasana. The front heel lines up with the back heel, as you can see on this line on my mat. And the back foot turns out slightly, just a little bit for balance. And then pull the left hip back, the right hip shifts forward. You want to square the hips right under the shoulders toward the front. Back heel stays down, interlace the hands behind you. Inhale, open the chest, belly button to spine. Exhale, hinge at the hips, keeping that front leg straight if you can. Pull the front thigh up. From here, place both hands either on the front thigh, or you can use the seat of your chair, or the right hand on the block, the left hand on the shin, or thigh. Let's breathe here for a moment. Inhaling, pulling that energy up from the earth, letting it cycle through the legs and the spine, out the crown. 
Exhaling, allowing the body, allowing the muscles to release tension. Visualize them opening, visualize them relaxing, really using your breath to melt that tension away. On your next inhale, place your hands on your hips with a strong belly and inhale the torso up. Open the chest at the very top and then exhale, step together. Standing in Tadasana before we switch sides, pulling the ears back over the shoulders, lift up through the crown chakra. Let's take a couple breaths here. Inhale, switching sides, the left foot steps back this time. Again, heel to heel alignment, and this is about a three foot step back. The back foot turns out slightly, and then square your hips to the front. So the right hip pulls back, and the left hip will shift forward to assist, getting right under the shoulders. Both legs are straight here, belly button to spine. Interlace the hands behind you. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, release the back heel down into the mat as you hinge at your hips. Make sure you have that nice, strong belly there for supporting the back as you come into a forward fold. You're welcome to keep the hands here, or you can place them on the front thigh. Just make sure you activate the front thigh so the back of the legs can stretch. This is also where you can use the seat of your chair or the block this time will be on the inside of the right foot. So I've got my right hand on my shin, my left hand on my block. Again, inhaling, pulling that energy up from the earth. Now working to get the left hip down toward the floor. So as if you had a glass of water bouncing on the sacrum here, those hips are flat, square to the floor. If this hip was up, my water would slide off toward the right. Dive into your exhales here to get deeper through the muscles. Hands on the hips with a strong belly. Inhale your torso up. Open the chest at the top. And then step together. Good. Now placing the block right in front of the feet, or you can use the seat of your chair. We'll come into a forward bend. So this will lead us to the floor so we can practice our inversions today. You have your ankles right under your hips and your feet are about hip width apart. Okay, so we'll try a forward fold. This is called Uttanasana. So I've got my weight in the balls of my feet. So your heels will gently lift away from the mat and you don't have to lift them. That's just to kind of check where your weight is. So you're just shifting toward the front end of the feet, the balls of the feet. You can have the hands on the hips. Remember, always belly button to spine before you fold. Inhale, exhale, hinge at your hips, engage your thighs, and fold over the front legs. This is where you can really feel the weight into the balls of the feet here. Only come down as far as you feel comfortable without pushing your body into some strange C-curve shape. So try to keep that nice, long, flat back. That means my crown and tailbone are in line. I'm engaging my thighs, even spiraling the thighs in toward the center line to help with that forward fold. And then I can place my hands on the seat of the chair or on the block for support. Keep engaging through the abdominal muscles. Nice deep breath here. You can use the block at any height that feels great for you. On your next exhale, go ahead and bend your knees and bring your hips down to the floor and remove your block. So get your block out of the way, but keep it close by. 
and reach for your next prop, your blanket. This is going to support our shoulders as we go upside down. So the idea here is that you get a nice flat fold out of your blanket. You want it to be quite thick, but not, not too thick. So you have to try it out for yourself and see what feels comfortable since I'm not there to help you with your blanket. But I just get it folded up, not super small, but almost completely folded. Then I'll place it in the center of the mat. Once I lay down on the blanket, my shoulders will be two inches from the top roll. So we're going to try Sarvangasana shoulder stand first. So I'm gonna get ready by laying my back down on the mat. So this is where I would get my ponytail out of the way. Make sure your neck is free of any obstructions. Now when I'm on my blanket, I check my shoulders. I should have two inches of blanket above my shoulders. So you can just feel that there for yourself. Now I'm gonna have you watch me do the asana first because once you're in the pose, you don't wanna be turning your head side to side to see what I'm doing. You can really pinch a nerve or hurt your neck. So watch me do it first, then I'll talk you through it, okay? So I'm gonna push my ponytail aside. I have a nice long neck on the floor. My nose faces the ceiling. My hands are down at my sides. Using my abs, I draw my knees in. Inhale up, catch my hips in my hands, and begin to walk my elbows in toward my torso as I walk my hands down toward my shoulder blades. Keeping my legs together, reaching the balls of my feet up, trying to get the hips over the shoulders. A gentler, easier version is called candlestick. You can drop your hips into your hands. So your hands are holding your hips instead. Now my toes are over my eyes and I'm at more of an angle here. So it's not quite as steep as a total complete inversion of shoulder stand. Basically, it's like an upside down Tadasana. This is nicknamed the candlestick and it's a little bit more gentle on the neck. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through it. So start with a nice long neck. Arms are down against your mat. Nose faces the sky. Using your abs, draw your knees in toward your chest and hike your hips up. Catch your hips with your hands and draw your elbows in close to your torso. Walk your hands low toward your shoulder blades as you begin to straighten your legs out, getting your ankles right above your hips. Using your abs, reach the balls of the feet up as high as you can, reach your toes up. You can keep the feet together, keep breathing, adjusting if you need to. And then slowly hinge at your hips. And let's go into candlesticks. So you'll drop your hips into your hands for support. And bringing now the toes more toward the face. Just leaning on my hands here. A little less tension or stress through the neck. A little gentler pose. And then slowly draw your knees in toward your face and lower your hips down, use your abs, and then staying down on the ground, let your blood come back to normal, and rock side to side to release tension on the neck. Nice, easy breathing. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate plow pose called halasana in Sanskrit. Starts exactly the same way. You want two inches of blanket above your shoulders. Go ahead and watch first, a little different than shoulder stand. Arms are down on the mat, using your abs. Hike your hips up the same way. This time I'm just gonna try to get my hips over my shoulders. And then gonna keep the feet together as I lower my legs behind me. So don't worry if your feet don't touch the ground. That's fine. This is also nice to do 
If you have a couch, you can set your feet on top of the couch or the seat of a chair. Okay, so if you can keep your spine nice and flat and lower the balls of the feet with straight legs toward the floor, you're welcome to try that. So I'm going to come down so I can talk you through it. Gazing up toward the sky, two inches of blanket above the shoulders, arms are down at your sides. Use your abs, draw your legs up, catch your hips in your hands, tuck your arms in as much as you can, and try to get your hands to your shoulder blades once again. Activate the abs, hinge at your hips, keeping your feet together with straight legs, slowly lower the legs behind you. Don't worry if the feet don't touch the ground, don't turn your head. Nice easy breathing here. Try to keep the abs active. Try to keep the spine nice and flat. We're not rounding through the tailbone. Now using your abs, bend your knees. Slowly lower the hips down without a thud. Good. Bring your heels to your glutes. Squeeze your knees to your chest and rock side to side. Go ahead in happy baby pose and reach around for the edges of the feet. Pressing your knees toward the mat and rock. If this is too much for your adductors or hamstrings, just let your heels come to your glutes instead. Place your hands on your shins and press the knees toward the arms. Let your knees come toward your heart and release. So now we'll do a counter pose to release that deep neck flexion that we just did. So now we'll do neck extension in what we call Matsyasana in Sanskrit or the fish pose. So this time we're going to use our blanket as a bolster to support the back of the head and neck. So just roll it up a little bit, place it at the top of the mat and take your block vertically underneath it. So you're making a T-shape with the blanket and the block. Your chest is gonna go right over, sorry, the, the spine, right under the sternum, will go on top of the block. So the idea here is that I'm taking my chin away from the sternum to get the extension. You want that. Then you can roll the blanket up under your head for maximum support it feels really nice too. So this should feel really comfortable. If you feel any pinching, you're gonna to wanna to adjust. But my shoulders are cascading over the back of the block. The chin is extending up away from the sternum. Palms face the sky. Legs can relax down and open. And breathe here naturally. Try to drop your tongue to the back of your throat and rest your jaw, throat, and chest. So let's get ready here. We're coming off the props. You're just going to roll to one side so you don't have to lift or strain your neck. 
roll over to one side, swipe your props off your mat so you can lay back down on your spine for some back releases before we lay in Shavasana. So go ahead and for Upanasana, double-legged wind reliever. Inhale your knees down to your chest, pressing them down with your hands. Activate your abs toward the floor, and then exhale your head up toward your knees. Inhale your head down, and exhale your knees up and away, keeping your hands on top. Inhale your knees to your chest, draw your abs down toward the mat, exhale your head up toward your knees, inhale your head down, exhale your knees away. One more time on your own, inhale your knees to your chest, exhale curl, inhale head down, exhale knees away. Good, now just bicycle the legs, back and forth here, roll your head side to side if you need to. And then reaching around for the edges of the feet, press the bottoms of the feet together, press your knees out to the sides, and then interlace the hands around the feet, pushing down past the tailbone. Breathe, this should stretch the neck and shoulders as well. Now releasing the knees one last time toward the chest and then laying down for Shavasana. So go ahead and let the feet flop open, palms face the sky, arms are down at a nice relaxed angle. Tongue drops to the back of the throat. Start to follow your breath nice and soft. You can even visualize inside the belly moving up and down. Try to keep the mind focused on the breath. This helps to retain the energy you gained through your asana practice. Whereas if you let your mind follow your thoughts, it drains your energy. Maintain what you've earned by following your breath. Now slowly begin to wiggle the fingers and toes. And when you're ready, roll onto one side.
and gently push yourself up to your seated position. Hands at the heart. Take a nice deep breath in the heart center. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time.